good evening everybody thank you chairpersons now i'll be talking about incredible journey of first ever oral glp1 receptor on lung that is oral semaglutide when you look at the journey of any development of molecule we will see how long it takes and how difficult it is when we get a drug it's very simple okay introduce six months back you say get it here it is not so if you look at it the journey is very long these are my financial disclosures now the journey like a serpent as you see here starting in 1960 then you see sequencer identified 22 years later it took 22 years look at here that identified in interest in 1986 another 4 years and clinical studies done here then you see 2005 that means 45 years of journey for a molecule from bench to bed side so that is how every molecule takes a long time it's not as simple as something accidentally penicillin was discovered within 6 months it is there not only that unlike in the past identifying a drug testing in animals human beings and fda approval then you look at even the cardiovascular safety unlike in the past after 2010 it's not enough if a drug shows that it is reducing blood sugar whether it's cardiovascular safe again if you see that fluorescein hlt2 it took 30 40 50 years before it came and many people probably were skeptic here maybe it may not work it's not good it is dangerous and then you see that everybody takes up that's how the journey of a drug is quite long and even from there let us say 2015 that it was approved for only obesity and 2005 approved for use in diabetes but people said injection daily injection once a day twice a day then can we have once a week or even tablet from there 2005 to 19 again it took 14 years from there for a drug which is early and for us we got in 2022 and when we get it becomes a blockbuster i don't want to reveal what is the sales i don't think they will be very happy and they are more than happy within 4 months what it has got that it shall shows that the acceptance among the public patients and doctors are great now when you look at it natural human glp1 unlock and then how some of them are modification in that then you have got xndin and modification in that what the amino acid sequence change we started with xnatide twice a day then we had liraglutide once a day oh it is good then we had lixis and tide then people ask can you have better one then we have a human glp1 unlock once a day to once a week dulaglutide and for long it has been thinking that nothing like oral let us have once a day tablet and again if you look at technology how it has developed for a patient's convenience again it's a big journey if you see that is how what we see today is once a day tablet semaglutide the only oral glp1 receptor analog and this is what the future will be i'm not surprised in future you may have a long acting oral semaglutide whether once a week even people will ask they may ask once a week also because once you have this technology how to make it slowly release or absorption so development of either liraglutide or semaglutide if you see addition of fatty acid sign chain to enhance the binding to human serum albumin so when you make that you will see that it's a longer one 94 to 97 homologous to human glp1 whereas if you see xnatide and all they are totally different one most important is small molecule why only when it is small molecule it can be absorbed cross this gastric epithelium and get into the blood tank if it is a huge molecule it will not be absorbed small molecules with extended half life result in in better glycemic control and weight efficacy that's why they have to have this molecule glp1 receptor analog which is a small molecule as such not a big one as such <clears throat> this is how when you see that the hydrogen and peptin fc mucosal ph is 7 and then it has to be absorbed go through that so degradation in the stomach any amino acid and any protein a protein and a peptide is a chain of amino acids when it goes to the stomach because the stomach enzymes and the ph is low it gets broken down just like we were taught in medical school that if you take snake poison and drink you will not die 
because that peptide is digested as food. Same thing comes here. How can you make this molecule and retain its original configuration, 3D configuration, absorbed as a whole molecule and upside? So, low pH, proteolytic enzymes. So, these are the problems where because the low pH acidic broken down and because of proteolytic enzyme it is done. Limited permeability across the gastrointestinal epithelium, low bioavailability. So, for these reasons, a peptide to be absorbed, whether it is insulin, or whether it's a GLP receptor analog, this is the problem we are facing. Highly intricate biological system in the place to provide difference. What is it that has been done? If you look at a regular molecule, what's a GLP-1 receptor? No? And the analog is, here you see in 26, 34, and 8. In these places, the changes are made. I don't want to go into details, very self-explanatory how in 34 amino acid substitution is done, lysine to arginine, and here how you see that changes are made 26 as well as 8, and substitution at a position 8, that is alanine to alpha amino glucosid. So this is how we see semaglutase as 94% homology with human GLP-1, and the approximately half-life, T half is half-life is one week. The half-life is only that it is there in the blood, but the effective life may be even shorter because of that. So, when you see the oral semaglutide, what are the things you see? It's a DPP for stability. Then you have got oral bioavailability. Hydrophilic absorbs water, small molecule. And the homology to human GLP-1 and most potent GLP-1 receptor analog. Highly specific albumin binding and half-life of one week. All these are important to make it clinically useful. Nowadays, unlike in the past, you don't have to see what happens. What is known as computational chemistry. There are small labs in Pune here, if you go and see. Hardly 20 people are working. On a computer, they see the amino acid sequence. Let me take out alanine in 18 position, put in what happens? All the characters will come. Even before you test on animals and human beings. How do I make this molecule long acting? Okay, the binding site, binding area and all. So it is not a matter of chance. Most of the research are 95% perspiration, 5% inspiration. Unlike what you saw penicillin, which has 95% inspiration, 5% perspiration. So that's how it's all biochemistry, science, molecular biology, and that's how you see that. So if you look at it, the snack, what is the snack technology? The snack technology, what we mean is sodium N and two hydroxybenzyl amino, this one, this is the one where you will see, because of the snack, that means there are two molecules will come up. Here is a GLP-1 and the snack is covering it. The snack protects semaglutide from breakdown by gastric enzymes. Then it allows semaglutide to be absorbed from the stomach and promotes absorption across the gastric cap. It is something like a carrier. When you have to transport insulin from one area to the other, you just cannot transport. You have to have it in an ice box, a refrigeration and so on. Just like that, a snack protect. Snack is metabolized via beta oxidation and glucuronidation and eliminated mainly. So once the lorry has transported insulin toward this, lorry disappears. We are not interested in what lorry. But it's a carrier which carries the molecule safely, effectively from manufacturer site or distribution to your hospital. That is exactly what this snack is. But it is not as simple as a lorry carrying it. Why? Because snack should have other characters also, I'll show you how in future it will does. If you look at semaglutide and liraglutide absorption after whole dosage, as you see here, this is what is semaglutide absorption, and you see liraglutide here. So time since distribution, how it varies between the two molecules. Now look at next generation innovation, development of whole semaglutide tablet. This is semaglutide, this is snack, this is insulin, something like this is a lorry which carries it. So this technology is, again, if you see the world, why can't you make world insulin? Last 20, 30 years, it is going on. People have spent five to $10 billion. Maybe in another two to three years, whether no one and others will bring out world uh, insulin. Same way, here we have got a molecule, the world semaglutide, daily GLP and receptor co-formulated with 300 milligram of snack. Don't bother about snack, it's a carrier. That's not important, it's only the drug. 
the co-formulation does not change the chemical structure of the semaglutide or snack. They remain as distinct. Lari is different once it downloads the insulin. Lari is quite good enough to take another one. Here it gets excreted, thrown out. You carry once and then disappear. We don't want the snack itself to cause a problem because that is very important. It has to be an inert substance as such. How does it work in the stomach? This is exactly. You have a snack and semaglutide together. And as the tablet erodes, the snack causes a transient localized increase in pH. Because if the pH is acidic, then the protein is broken down. So it increases the local pH to around 7 or so, protecting semaglutide from degradation. And that is how you see snack facilitates a highly localized absorption of semaglutide across the gastric mucosa in a concentration dependent manner via effects of transcellular pathway. Don't think 100% is absorbed. Just like oral also or inhaled, there are problems of it. The absorption may be less. Now, most important thing is, it's not like any other type. Take this tablet before food and then fine. How long? Okay, 30 minutes before. No, it does not. Try it very carefully. Take when you wake up on an empty stomach. You need at least eight hours of fasting. It is not that you have food 4 o'clock, get up at 6 o'clock, have it. So 6 to 8 hours of fasting. Wake up and take your semaglutide tablet straight away with half a glass of water, 120 ml. Sir, some Baba Swamiji has said, you drink every day 3 liters of water, then only the stomach will clean away. Don't do all that for this. Because if you take 1 liter, 2 liter, 3 liter, it's not going to work. Because our patients believe Babas and Swamiji more than doctors and all. And somebody says, no, I can't drink so much of water. I'll have one sip of water. No. Why this? For an ideal condition, 120 ml of water. That means half a glass of water. You don't have to measure that. Everybody knows one cup contains 250 ml. Half a cup is 120. That is the ideal one. Neither two less nor two more. Not one ounce. One ounce is only 30 ml. No, it won't. See, these are the things. Sometimes... Patient thinks, oh, you are telling so much, oh, forget it, doctor, I don't want to take. No, you have to explain to him why important. It is not rocket science or anything. So this is what approximately this, then it's okay. Because many people try to say, oh, this is a disadvantage, I can't measure 120. I don't think it's a problem. Most of the patients understand what it is, literate or semi-literate. Then wait at least 30 minutes. Sometimes people say, my cardiologist says, I must take this drug first. Nephrologist has said, I must take this drug. Endocrinologist has said, I must take this. No. As soon as you get up, keep it there and take this tablet. Wait half an hour. After that, you take your drug. Then you go ahead with it. So these are very, very important. This, this is how the schedule is. Why is important is, if you don't follow the instruction, probably drug is not effective. Then you come back and say, sorry, sir, you are given this drug. My weight has not come down. HbA1c has not come down. I don't think this drug is working. So always, like, we check the compliance. Many times patients say, Sir, I'm daily taking thyroxine. My TS is 30. Okay. Tell me how many days in a week you have missed. Maybe two, three days. Okay. In a month, how many days you have missed? Ten days. Then ask mother. No, sir, the bottle is same last one month. So just like you check that, please check whether they are taking it at the right time, pill count, or right way that she has to take. So always she has to tap up, like liraglutide. We don't give liraglutide straight away 1.8 milligram. Start this 3 milligram, one month. Tell them the side effect, that these are the side effects. You may have nausea, little vomiting, and you can get away with it after some time. So if you are comfortable after one month, go to 7 milligrams. Then for one month, that's why I always write, okay, patient has come tomorrow or day after tomorrow, 7th of August, then I write 8th August to 7th of September by only 30 tablets. Okay, no problem. Then from 9th of September to one month or two months, you buy 7M. That is how we say. Otherwise, the cost of medicine is I don't buy for three months or anything, buy for one month. Any problem, please get back to me. So when you do in this, at least I can see 90 5% of my patients tolerate 3 milligram well, they come to 7 milligram. Let us say 80% of my patients are comfortable with even 7. Not that 100% will go to the next stage. Because now we have 3 to 4 months of experience with that. If they tolerate 7, then only go to 14 milligram, which is the 
probably today is the ideal dose to best delivery. But don't think this will stop here. There are already 25 and 50 mg of semaglutide going on, studies are going on. Maybe next year or two years, three years later, we may come down from 14 to 25, 25 to 50, safe, effective and other things. So this is how dosing is done. There is no urgency. Because weight loss, improved glucose control, CV reduction, improved lipid metabolism, reduced inflammation, resolution with no worsening of fibrosis. These are the things that are there. And not only just obesity, diabetes, atherosclerotic heart disease, lipid, inflammation, NASH, because this is a one drug, and future it will be Alzheimer's disease. There are already initial data. Maybe we'll have to wait for some time. So that means it started with diabetics, with obesity, went on to cardiologists. Then you see lipidologists using it. Then probably rheumatologists will use in future. And of course, hepatologists, just like SGLT2 inhibitor, hepatologists also will use. Maybe neurologists also. Maybe what started as our drug will become six specialties using it, that's what we see in future, newer indications will come out. Now, yes, so I showed you already this, we have already seen this, how it works. So diabetes, cardiovascular, obesity, kidney disease, oh, I forgot nephrologist. Then hepatologist, then you see neurologist. So like many drugs, it starts for one disease, why did aspirin? When we were a student, we thought aspirin is for headache. Today it is used anything other than headache. So that is how you see, but maybe in future, apart from diabetes, it may be used by so many other specialities. This evolution of the drug is very interesting. And thus we need to know how I recommended across the globe for diabetes approved. Then cardiovascular already recommended because it has been seen in other non-diabetics as well. And already approved, FDA approved for obesity. Then you will see proven benefit of these things in flow study for further benefits, then you may see whether phase two studies are going on uh, for other indications like NASH. Maybe next year we'll have data and also semaglutide phase one for Alzheimer's disease. Because we don't know whether phase one, whether it'll go to phase two, three, and finally it comes or not. But at least we have reached this stage. Subsequently, probably, it'll go to next one as such. To summarize my talk, incretins and insulin started journey together 100 years back. But insulin came within few years, but incretin took longer time. Development of GLP-1 receptor unlock class of drugs have evolved from short-acting to longer-acting molecules and from injectable to oral. And you are already seeing that because when we told our patient, a lot of them say it's an injection daily, weekly, I don't want to take. If it is a tablet, doctor, I will take, cost is not effective. Peptide unlock can be designed to offer improved stability, prolonged half-life, while a formulation approach can facilitate improved absorption. This is not the end. As I told you, higher dose, maybe that better. Suppose from 1%, make it 3%. We remember when the nasal insulin came, first Italian studies, NEGM, 3% was absorbed. Today, it has gone up to 11%. Somebody may have 30% as the technology. Same thing, I'm sure, as the technology improves. One, side effect should be less, absorption will be more, and once the usage increases, naturally cost of it has come down. We have seen insulin 240 rupees, then way back somewhere 90s, then it became 140. For 25 years it has remained same. Is there any drug in the world, 25 years it is the same cost. No other drug has it. So that is how I feel in future also that more usage will be better. Absorption of old semaglutide takes place in the stomach and requires snack. I've told you what is snack, how it works. Then development of peptide, a pill, old semaglutide represents advancement in treatment possibilities of chronic disease, transforming injectable therapy to all. Thank you for your hearing. If there are any questions, I would like to take now because I have to go for another meeting. Our comments, opinions, we can not, take not necessarily journey, journey of semaglutide, and my journey with semaglutide also. <laughs> because there's Banshee and Altmash, they're going to talk about, I don't want to take away the thunder from them. So they will say about clinical utility, their experience and others. But if there are any questions, comments, I'm happy to take it.